Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. It would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. I started that in 94. But it was always out here. Yeah. So your customers will come out of town, technically, to come see you because it's you. Yeah, well, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Goodness, they come from Silverwood and everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So that adds a dimension to this whole story too, because it isn't just um, residents that have been here for 40, 50, 60 years, this business element to it too. I had so, a client that came today that had a rock hit her car on the way out here. She was pretty uh, upset. You know. Break a windshield, put a dent, scratch? A, a dent in the, in the top of it. In the hood. Mm, in the hood, yeah. So that's just one. Like I worry every day. My clients are they're nervous coming out here. Oh, it's hard. It's awful. And I'm like we probably would have moved by now. But we with my business, you can't just move a business like that. You have to, especially if we moved in the city, you'd have to have, you know. So it's it's well, we're we don't know what to do. And I worry about our health a lot, mm -hmm. especially with the dust. I mean that. I never had allergies until the last couple of years. You know, I take allergy pills every day now. And that's just one thing. I mean, we don't even know what else it's doing to our lungs and breathing that out. And I, I for on a personal level, the dust is one of the biggest things for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see it in your house, you can see it in your car, you can see, I mean, it's everywhere. And it is a thick coat of dust. I mean, the noise bothers me, but it's not as much as the danger on the road and the danger of the rocks falling and, the, and again, the dust, you know. That's the things that bother me the most. Mm -hmm. And the noise does too, but I think you get, you know how you tune things out. Right, it's no nice. different than the regular road traffic. <coughs> Once you live in a place for so long, you sort of tune it out. Mm -hmm. And we go away in the summertime. We're away every weekend. We camp and we go away every weekend. Thank God, because I wouldn't be able to stand it. Hmm. And you can you can see the, especially if it rains, you can really see it. It's like a, it's almost like a cement yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. What's the road like when it rains in that? Place? Oh, it's it's dangerous. Like it's like it's slippery, hmm. very slippery. Hmm. And I'm surprised that someone hasn't gone off the road yet when it rains because it's so coated. And from the Quarry Road right down to just. Like right around here, it's bad. It's really bad. My husband it gets very worked out about up about it more mm -hmm. so than I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get upset, but I he gets very very upset. I think it's the um, I don't care attitude from Myra and basically most of the people in the government. Like they don't care. They don't care about us. They really don't. No one's done anything. I mean, poor Jerry, he's worked as, he really, ha truly has, mm -hmm. and it's such a thank, he's been, it's thankless, you know. Yeah. Well, I think that there's been lots of meetings, there's been people here from the MLA and everything, but nothing's ever been done. I mean, they listen to you, but that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. And, oh, we feel bad for you, but no one's doing anything. And our, t our uh, property, value has gone down like it's our taxes have it's gone down seventy thousand dollars that's a lot of money your property taxes our property 
Yeah, our so, assessment. So the assessors devalued you, devalued yeah. your property yeah. based on the quarry. Yeah, there. seventy thousand dollars. And there's no compensation for that. None. It, it makes you not want to do things for, in your house. It. I mean, why do something in your house? Like I want would love to get the driveway paved, but I don't want to spend any money. Like why put more money into something that nothing is worth there. nothing? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The blasting was very, very scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very. Like I was. I haven't and heard any yet this year. No, I, this, this. No, spring. I haven't heard any si since they've reopened. Yeah. This year, no. Neither I. But it, it was scary. <laughs> I wish that. I wish they'd either compensate us, or stop the quarry, one or the other. No, I don't think either one of those is going to happen, but. If they compensated us, I'd walk away from that house. I'd walk away from here. And I mean, we our kids all grew up here, just like your kids all grew up here. And they don't do the, they don't even do what they're supposed to do. Like they never cover those trucks. They have too much in the trucks. They drive see, way too I fast. I've never seen, I've never seen one stop at that stop sign coming out of the road. <laughs> and I mean, I go up there to get my mail every day, and I yeah. never see a truck stop. They don't stop and there's a stop sign after. there. No. I don't know. It's a, such. It's so sad. It's caused so much grief here with uh, with all of the neighbors here, but especially some worse, some for it worse than others. I think, and I do think it's much worse for the people that are here all day, because yeah. I see those trucks every like constantly, and there's not a minute between those trucks. It's it's sad. We talk about it all the time. It's a conversation we have almost daily. What we're gonna do. And we don't know what we're gonna do because we have to, we can't move without having the value of our house to you know we can't buy another house we can't just leave the house what do you do i don't know